it's a box of books. I'm having a field day. It wouldn't matter what books were in this box. They could be technical manuals and I would probably still be having fun. Books? The fact that they're children's books just makes it all the more fun. So today is, ooh, Walt Disney's Mother Goose. Not oh. just any Mother Goose. Walt Disney's Mother Goose. Didn't they have like a live action show with a puppet of Mother Goose? I remember that, but I don't remember if it was Disney. Hmm. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Continuing our exploration through the box of donations. No, I'm not deliberately always grabbing golden books. Maybe a little bit. Today we are looking at Walt Disney's Mother Goose, which is D79. That means there are 78 other Disney books before this one, if I understand the labeling correctly. Because hmm. Disney books have Ds. It's the different style of back cover, where it's not a list of all the books or the train tracks. It's just a bunch of characters. But here's the list I was looking for. See, Disney is all Ds. And when this one came out, they were up to 123. Wow. Yeah. My sentiments exactly. Mm-hmm. Also, the front cover, um, eh, yeah. Yeah, I was having a little issue with the way Mickey's legs were, who's riding Mother Goose, by the way, until I caught how they actually are correctly layering his back leg. Yeah, but at first glance, it doesn't look quite right. Though the one on the inside cover looks much better. So, Walt Disney's Mother Goose. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Al Dempster. Hmm. Kind of a word art thing going on here with Mother Goose surrounding the rounded corners of this rounded square that Mickey and Mother Goose are in. Mm-hmm. All right, so... Let's see. Copyright 1952 and 1949. And this was the 16th printing in 1972. Wow, there's a lot of colorful art there. Though this is almost a reuse of the previous page, isn't it? That is exactly a reuse of the previous page. Yes, and I think this is going to be the book of how many Disney characters can we cram into Mother Goose stories? Because on this left-hand page with Mickey and Mother Goose flying overhead, we have Dumbo and Snow White and Pluto and Peter from Peter and the Wolf and the Three Little Pigs and characters that it's been too long I don't remember the names of because there's a bear and a penguin. Yeah, that's the penguin who made a boat out of ice to sail to a tropical island because he was tired of being cold. And I think, is, is that Dumbo's mouse or is that one of the mice from Cinderella? Um, with that tail, I was calling that a bear, not a mouse. Oh. And no, that is not Dumbo's mouse and that doesn't look like Gus Gus or Jack Jack. Yeah. But anyways, actually moving on to reading the book. <laughs> yeah, well, we like talking about the art. That's kind of one of the reasons I'm here. The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts, and with them ran away. The King of Hearts called for those tarts, and beat the Knaves full sore. The Knave of Hearts brought back those tarts, and said he'd steal no more. Okay, that's interesting. I have completely forgotten Mother Goose. <laughs> wow, is, is Mother Goose also responsible for the thumb in the pie and pulled out? <laughs> oh, you you mean on the next page? Ah! But, yeah, I really like the art for this one, especially Minnie in the corner here. There's something about her face. She They did her very royal. Though, I think there's also Minnie up here, but they have her with a different headdress. Because this is the Queen of Hearts baking the tarts, and then you see the knave here watching. And then you see the knave taking the tarts. You see the king yelling, and the knave giving the tarts back. Oh, it starts in the upper left corner, goes over to the right upper corner, then back down to the left lower corner, then across to the right. It's a Z. Hey diddle diddle. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. 
The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. That is definitely a classic, and I don't... The only character I recognize is Pluto. You don't recognize Figaro. Oh, that's supposed to be Figaro? As the cat from a Pinocchio. Um, the version of Figaro that lives with Minnie. Oh, no, I do not. All right. Moving on. Crosspatch. Crosspatch, draw the latch. Sit by the fire and spin. Take a cup and drink it up and call your neighbors in. Okay. That one I've never heard before. Yeah, I don't remember that one. A nice image of Grumpy sitting by the fire. Isn't it about bringing friends in? But it says draw the latch, so sit by the fire and spin. So I would take that to mean like lock the door, but then they say call your neighbors in. But I'm like, didn't we just lock the door? Apparently drawing the latch meant unlocking the door. Oh, it would. Though you can draw the latch either way. Mm-hmm. And continuing with um, Seven Dwarfs, Little Jack Horner. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner, eating a Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and took out a plum and said, what a good boy am I. That particular one uh, reminds me of the fact that there's a lot of hidden meaning in Mother Goose stories. In, in that story, he's not, they're not actually talking about a plum. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was a nice special on TV a while ago. When I mean a while ago, I mean back when I was a kid. That actually went through all of the Mother Goose ones and talked about the time that they were written and what they probably meant. I can't remember what that one actually meant, but I just remember there's meaning behind stuff also. Which, which one is that? I'm not quite sure which of the seven dwarfs that would be. Uh, that's probably happy. All right, I guess this would be shipping fuel. Jack Sprat. Jack Sprat could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. And so betwixt them both, you see, they licked the platter clean. And it has Dumbo and the mouse. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Little Betty Blue. Little Betty Blue lost her holiday shoe. What shall Little Betty do? Buy her another to match the other, and then she'll walk in two. Okay, is that supposed to be Cinderella? Not quite Cinderella, but Cinderella-like, because the shoe is being left behind, the clock is set to midnight. Mm -hmm. So they didn't quite want to make it look like their Cinderella, but it kind of looks like their Cinderella. And some of these are really short. Jumping Joan. Here I am, little Jumping Joan. When nobody's with me, I'm always alone. Hey, okay, that's another one I haven't heard, and also... Yes? Uh, that, that one kind of seems obvious. Also, but using one of the mushrooms from Fantasia. Very cute. Deedle Deedle Dumpling. Deedle Deedle Dumpling, my son John, went to bed with his stockings on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle Deedle Dumpling, my son John. They have Jiminy Cricket sitting on a violin with his shoes off. I'm thinking that particular thing is actually from Pinocchio. I know Jiminy is. I'm talking about the violin and him sleeping on it. I think that was actually in the movie. <laughs> Been too long. This little pig. This little pig went to market. This little pig stayed at home. This little pig had roast beef. This little pig had none. This little pig cried wee 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 all the way home. And I like how they actually use the three little pigs tail to illustrate things. Especially the wee 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 all the way home with the wolf chasing after the pig. Hmm. And it kind of does that um, Z pattern again. Because you're showing pig out with a market basket. Then you're showing another pig in the house of straw. Then you're showing a pig in the house of bricks with the roast beef. And then one in the house of, looks like the house of straw again. It's an interior shot with an empty plate. And then the pig that was shown going out to market, running back to the brick house, being chased by the wolf. Oh, very nicely illustrated. The only thing so far that's off model is the Cinderella one. But I think you're right, they're trying not to... Make it be 100% Cinderella because the name of the rhyme is Little Betty Blue. So the character has a name and it's not Cinderella. Oh, Mary's Lamb. 
Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. And they have Minnie and a little lamb. And she's got her school book, and we see the school there in the background on the path. Hmm. And I see something very interesting coming up. Well, interesting if you know the history of certain Disney movies that Disney doesn't want people to to remember anymore. Yes. One, two, ten. One, two, three, four, five. I caught a hare alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I let him go again. Okay, there's this little film called... The Song of the South. And we have the wolf and the hare from that one. Basically, the only part of this movie that still exists is the song playing on the log ride at Disneyland. They have never re-released it from the vault, not even back in VHS days, and it will probably never come out of the vault. Though what's really funny is I actually remember at least watching the cartoon part of it on TV when I was younger. That was before it was 100% killed. Because yeah. I remember... I want to say that I had an album hmm. of part of it, of part of the story, at least of Br'er Rabbit. Whether it was Disney or not, I can't say, because I only have my small albums. I don't have my big ones. Ah. I think they're still at my parents. And Jack be nimble. Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. Why did they choose Bambi? Uh, because deer jump, there would not be a candle in the forest. And also considering that the fo well, maybe this is how the forest fire in the movie started. Ooh, ooh ow, ooh, ow. Yes, it's all Bambi's fault. Because he was playing around with a candlestick. And he had no idea what it was. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Had a wife and couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Because we have Jiminy Cricket and a, another cricket. Though it kind of reminds me of another movie and I can't remember. It was still a Disney movie, but I can't remember what it is. I may have actually seen a similar female cricket. I was thinking more of um, the Disney animated short of... The grasshopper and the ants. That's what I was... That's exactly what I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. Also, it's the Jiminy who has the better outfit. Well, at this point, he has a wife, so... Yeah! Ooh. Okay. Handy Pandy, Jack-a-Dandy, loved plum cake and sugar candy. He bought some at a grocer's shop, and out he came, hop, hop, hop. That's a nice picture. Yes, Mickey with all these sweets jumping down a lane and you can see all the sweets in the bag and i'm guessing that's the plum cake plum cake very nicely i i want to say animated because he is the pose is very exact it's a pose in motion and they got nice clouds in the background and it's very nice this is the way the ladies ride oh yep because they are they've got a riding side saddle god who came up with that idea very insecure. This is the way the ladies ride. Trot, 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 trot. This is the way the gentlemen ride. Gallop a trot, gallop a trot. This is the way the farmers ride. Hobblety hoy, hobblety hoy. Okay. So we have Minnie for the ladies, Mickey for the gentlemen. I didn't realize cowboys were gentlemen. I would have expected a male version of how Minnie is portrayed. And then we have Goofy on a plow horse for the farmer. I'm guessing it's because of the gallop thing. Also, if I remember correctly, the side saddle thing was all about the hymen. Yeah, still stupid and unsafe. Very unbalanced. A lot of things done to women in those days was less about them being safe and more about them preserving themselves for something else. And you'd think being safe was part of that, but no. Look up some stuff about foot wrapping in China. Mm, yeah. Simple Simon. Simple Simon met a pie man going to the fair. Says Simple Simon to the pie man, Let me taste your ware. 
Says the pieman to Simple Simon, Show me first your penny. Says Simple Simon to the pieman, Indeed I have not any. He went to catch a dicky bird and thought he could not fail, because he got a little salt to put upon his tail. Simple Simon went to fishing for to catch a whale, and all the water he had got was in his mother's pail. He went for water in a sieve, but soon it all ran through. And now poor Simple Simon bids you all adieu. It's kind of nice that they picked Goofy for this, but he is like... I'm not quite sure about his coloring. I think it's off because he is really dark. He is drawn very dark here. I Like, was he drawn dark in earlier episodes? Because I don't remember that. Because at first I thought it was just the shadow of the tent in this first one. Oh, but it's a consistent color all the way across. Yeah, and you see Minnie and Mickey in the background. Or at least kid versions of them anyways. Yeah, they they look a little young to be. But that could just be them trying to do perspective and sizing. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. A good choice for that particular character. Mm hmm Ding dong bell. Mm. Sorry, some things just make me want to punch someone. Ding dong bell. Pussy's in the well. Who put her in? Little Johnny Green. Who pulled her out? Big Johnny Stout. What a naughty boy was that to try and drown poor Pussycat, who never did him any harm, but killed the mice in his father's barn. Yeah, I see what you mean. From the way you reacted, I thought it was something I might have to edit out. Meaning like, oh, that's there's words in here that we really shouldn't broadcast. No, no, just excellent that's... choice for images of picking one of the naughty boys from Pinocchio as the bad guy and Pinocchio as the good guy. But I get that kind of reaction a lot to stuff like this from friends of mine who like care a lot about animals. I mean, I know this used to be a thing. That doesn't mean I can't be disgusted by it. A diller, a dollar. A diller, a dollar, a ten o'clock scholar. What makes you come so soon? You used to come at ten o'clock, and now you come at noon. <laughs> Donald and Huey. And apparently Huey's coming back late from school because... He has books on his back, and Donald's pointing at the clock, which says noon. But it says, you used to come at ten, and now you come at noon. But the line, what makes you come so soon, sounds like they're coming earlier, not later. But then you have ten instead of noon. So, hmm. Alright. Bobby Shafto. Bobby Shafto's gone to sea, silver buckles at his knee. He'll come back and marry me, pretty Bobby Shafto. But he's a pirate? Um, the picture looks like pirate, but the rhyme does not say. just says gone to sea. Yep. Though I must say, even though this was way before Pirates of the Caribbean, his outfit kind of reminds me of Jack Sparrow. Pirates of the Caribbean, the movie franchise, was inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean, the ride. Yes, I knew that, but... Jack Sparrow outfit was specifically crafted by Johnny Depp. So his look was very unique to him, and I'm saying specifically, it reminds me a lot of his choices. There were two blackbirds. There were two blackbirds sitting on a hill. The one named Jack, the other named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come again, Jack. Come again, Jill. Okay, we got the crows from Dumbo, and I believe they're both guys... So Jack is okay for one, but Jill is commonly a... Female name, but I don't think Disney had any female blackbirds or crows. Old King Cole. Old King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. He called for his pipes, and he called for his bowl, and he called for his fiddlers three. Now where is this from? I recognize it, but I can't quite place it. There are music box down there. She's sitting on top of a clock up there, a princess of some sort, and the king's sitting in another clock. So they're all clocks, I think. Well, the conductor and the musicians all look like clocks, but if you look at the way the king and the princess are drawn, they don't have that rough-hewn look to them. Hmm. I want to say he's the king from the Brave Little Tailor cartoon. Hmm. Could be wrong. 
Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Interesting art. Donald in a cracked egg and Daisy and Mickey looking over the wall. They're all smiling, by the way. So, apparently that wasn't so bad. Apparently it was like a joke of some sort. Lots and lots of people on this one. Yeah, it's almost like a Where's Waldo drawing. Just about, including some of those who are no longer mentioned. Yep. And, see, I told you it was a bear. The old woman who lived in a shoe. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread. She whipped them all soundly and sent them to bed. Wow. Just think of the time periods these things were written. Well, we went through a long time period where children were not cherished. Yeah. Look back at like some old Christmas history. Before children were cherished, mm. uh, more like the witch Bofana running off with the kids. <laughs> also, I think that's the Indian from Peter Pan. No, that's Little Hiawatha. Ah, thank you for the correction, because I was like, wait a minute, just as I was saying it, I was saying, wait a minute, there is that one. We got Dumbo, we got Peter, we got the penguin skiing behind Pluto, we got the three... Caballeros... The Three Pigs. Once again, we have a few cast members from Song of the South. We have Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And stuff from Pinocchio. The bears on the tightrope we already mentioned. Not sure who's controlling the puppet that's coming out of the window of the upside-down shoe. Mm -hmm. Rockabye Baby. Rockabye Baby on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come baby, cradle and all. And we have a bluebird that my brain goes, I know where that's from, but I can't place it right now. Well, there's a lot of bluebirds in early Disney because, you know, princesses can charm birds from the trees. Oh, rub-a-dub-dub, rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub. And who do you think they be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Turn them out, knaves all three. Interesting, I can see why they picked those particular three now with the last line. Yes, knaves all three. It, it's the three from Pinocchio, the guy from Pleasure Island, and the wolf and cat. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got, and home did trot, as fast as he could caper. Went to bed and plastered his head with vinegar and brown paper. Okay. They have a bottle of vinegar. Yes, and that looks like brown paper. I'm not quite sure how that helps with a, con a concussion, but hey. Oh, all sorts of theories over the years. Little Miss Muffet. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. There came a great spider and sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. And we have Minnie and a, what is that, Scottish, Irish spider? I would say Scottish because that looks like a kilt. Hickory dickory dock. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. See, that, tail is drawn completely yes, different, differently. But they have, if it is that bear, it's got the wrong color shirt, but yeah, you're right. Although he's really small in that picture. Little Tommy Tucker. Little Tommy Tucker sings for his supper. What shall he eat? White bread and butter. How shall he cut it without ever a knife? How shall he marry without any wife? Butter can be cut without a knife, but if it's a whole loaf of bread, yeah. Um, you could rip it and dip it in the butter. You could rip it because people used to do broken bread before there was such a thing as sliced bread. Hmm. And then I'm reminded of a 
fun story Ember shared with me about toast and dragons. <laughs> Quite. Georgie Porgy. Georgie Porgy, pudding and pie, kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, Georgie Porgy ran away. Using Bashful and two puppets. Hmm. Also, the previous picture had Pinocchio in it, dressed in a costume, apparently singing. Yes. Which, now that I think about it, kind of works, because of the whole, um... Got no strings. strings. Wee Willy Winky. Wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs, in his nightgown. Rapping at the window, crying at the lock. Are the babies in their beds? For now it's eight o'clock. Was that ever actually a job? I... Town crier was a job. I don't know if calling the hours was ever a job. Hmm. And it's Donald running around. In his dressing gown. And final one. Wow, this is taking a long time because basically we have to stop and talk about every single rhyme. Bye, baby bunting. Bye, baby bunting. Daddy's gone a-hunting. To get a little rabbit skin to wrap the baby bunting in. Hmm. And it's the... Hiawatha. Hiawatha. What's really interesting is... Even though I don't think it's the same art, I think it's the same pose between here and the... Other page. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the same pose. Slightly different art, but mainly in the coloring. So yeah, this makes absolutely no sense because no context. You know, like you were saying earlier, these rhymes usually have deeper meaning. They were usually done to convey a lesson at the time. And because we're in the wrong, definitely the wrong decade, possibly the wrong century. Actually, we're in the 2000s now, so I can definitely say both of those things are true. <laughs> we're in the wrong decade and the wrong century to have the appropriate context to interpret what was actually being conveyed. We're also not history scholars or cultural scholars, which you would need to properly get the context of these. Because it's not just being able to read the words. The words are in English, but it's the meaning at the time and the context of what was going on during the time period. So, yeah. Basically, I'm able to make more sense out of Magical Mystery Tour than out of these rhymes. Even though Magical Mystery Tour has four or five magicians, we're never sure. <laughs> Also, Paul McCartney's new album is really good. And since we don't know when you, individual listener, are listening to this, that would be Egypt Station. So, this is Walt Disney's Mother Goose. Illustrations by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Al Dempster. I'm wondering what adaptions, because the ones... Maybe they're talking about the image? Maybe the images? I did notice some words seemed different on some of them that I remember. There were slight word variances, but I figured that could be put down to regional differences, but maybe that was the adaptation. Hmm. Though you think if they were going to take out anything, it would, they would have taken out the mother whipping her children, but... Yeah. I, saw, I, I was like, there's a lot of the negative stuff they left in there, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'd rather have some negative... So many things are so uh, sanitized now. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a whole term for it. Disneyizing it when it comes to fairy tales and turning them into movies. But I mean just the average modern children's book. Certain items excluded. Go see Cowpoke Clyde for details. Ah. Uh, and thank you, Sasami-chan. This was interesting. I certainly enjoyed it. 